Hey guys, what I wanna show you today is how duct leakage can wreak havoc on a house when it comes to comfort and indoor air quality. Now I'm specifically talking about houses that have the duct system outside of the building enclosure like you see here. So this could be uh, a duct system in a vented attic, in a vented crawl space, an unconditioned basement, uh, areas like that. Uh, this is very common throughout the Southeast uh, and other parts of the country. So before we dive into this, I wanna welcome you to The Madhouse, uh, affectionately named after the Mad Air paper that was written by John Tooley and and Neil Moyer uh, back in the 80s, which I believe is one of the most underutilized pieces of information in our industry. If you haven't read Mad Air or learn about those concepts, please do so, it's eye-opening. So I'll be using the Madhouse to, to teach all kinds of stuff, but today we're gonna talk about what duct leakage actually does to a home. So to start with, you can see I have a manometer uh, that's tied in to the house here. Uh, so it's reading a uh, differential pressure uh, between the inside and outside of the house. Now, in a real home, you're not gonna have a test port that you can just plug right into on the side of a house. So you'll use uh, something like our multi-probe to do that. So it's a rigid metal tube that you can shut under an exterior door so you can get that outside reference. So you can see these little orange dots here that are on the duct system. These are plugs that I can use to simulate duct leakage. So right now, they're all plugged up. Uh, and it's not perfectly sealed, uh, just like a real duct system. There is a little bit of leakage at some of these joints, uh, but it is relatively tight. Uh, since it's all 3D printed, um, everything fits together pretty nice. So uh, as we kick it on, we can see uh, our blower is generating our flow here. There's a miniature squirrel cage fan here that's actually used in 3D printers uh, that's serving as our air handler. So now that we're up and running, you can see that we're just slightly negative, half a Pascal. If you're not familiar with Pascals, Pascals are a very small unit of pressure. Uh, there's about 250 Pascals in one inch of water column. So if we're talking about measuring pressure for uh, static pressure on an HVAC system, yeah, like one Pascal is not really a whole lot. But when we're talking about the pressure of a whole house, it can mean quite a bit. So let's go ahead and simulate that supply side duct leakage. We'll start taking some of these plugs out and we'll see what happens to our house pressure. You can really see it start to drop there. It's going more and more negative. That's because we are sending supply air to the outside of the building envelope, which means we're pulling more air on the return than the air that's being distributed the supplies to the house, which is gonna make the house go negative. The opposite is also true. If we had uh, less leakage on the supply and more leakage on the return, that would make the house go positive. So now you can see we're at about uh, almost negative five Pascals, uh, which can mean a lot uh, for a whole house. Uh, that can backdraft a water heater in a lot of cases uh, and cause some real problems. So whenever we're doing this type of test with a high resolution manometer to see how duct leakage is impacting the pressure of a house, that's called a dominant duct leakage test. That's where we're trying to see which side of the duct system is the leakiest. So again, if it's negative, it's the supply side. If it's positive, it's the return side. And this really works well if you have a relatively tight building envelope. Uh, I've got some sliders along uh, these walls here uh, where I can actually make the envelope leakier so let's do that. Let's, let's create uh, a leaky house scenario where I open some of these up. And so as I make the envelope leakier, we can see that pressure start to drop. So our supply leakage is still the same, but our house leakage has increased. So that leakage in the building envelope serves as pressure relief. So if you're doing this in a house, you're running the HVAC system, you see this reading looks pretty good, but we know it's not. It might just mean that you need a little bit more information to figure out what's going on. Um, there's some things that you can do when you have that manometer hooked up. Aside from running the HVAC system, you can do things to depressurize the house to see if it moves. So running the kitchen exhaust, if it's uh, connected to the outdoors, uh, you can run a dryer, bath fan. And if you kick all of that stuff on, if it's a relatively tight envelope, the house should depressurize more and more as you kick uh, those different types of fans on. If it doesn't move at all, that's a good indicator that you have a leaky envelope. And then it's probably time to run a blower door test to see how leaky that enclosure is. So you can see here that even though I have an almost zero uh, Pascal pressure differential, just 0.2 Pascals is not a lot. 
even though there's not a lot of pressure to read there, if I put some smoke towards uh, one of these leaks, you can see that there's still quite a bit of flow. We're still having some air driven into the house. Even though we're not reading a lot of pressure, it's still causing problems. So in the summertime, that's unwanted, hot, humid air that's getting pulled in because of the supply leaks in the duct system. In the wintertime, that's unwanted, cold, dry air that's getting pulled in. Uh, so basically, at this point, with that type of duct leakage uh, for a system outside of the envelope, that's the HVAC system working against itself. Uh, so it's just making it so much more inefficient, a lot harder to keep it comfortable. And plus, if you think about where these systems are located, if it's in a crawl space that's vented uh, or an attic that's very dusty, it's pulling all of that stuff in those climates into the house. So that's definitely air we don't want to breathe. That's now getting distributed all throughout our living space. So let's button things back up uh, to simulate that tighter envelope. Uh, we'll fasten everything back down and yeah, we'll, we'll drive ourselves back down to uh, almost negative five Pascals. And so we've got our, our house tightened back up. We still have our supply leakage, but uh, another thing to consider too is what if we had return leakage that was almost as equal? So let's pull out some of these plugs on the return side. And there we can watch that house pressure start to drop. So if we're just trying to gauge things, I mean, some folks might think that number is pretty good. Uh, we're getting down to uh, just about negative one Pascal, which would appear normal. But as we can see, we've got a lot of leakage on both the supply and the return side. So Sometimes that number can be a little bit deceiving. Uh, just because you see a low number doesn't mean there's not a lot of leakage. It could just mean you have a lot of leakage that's equal on both the supply and the return side. So if you uh, are still suspicious after you see a number like this, after uh, a lot of comfort complaints, the way to really get to the bottom of that is just to do a duct leakage test with a duct tester. Um, and I have plenty of videos uh, on our YouTube channel that show how to do that. So now we'll seal these leaks back up in the return to bring the house more negative with our envelope uh, still pretty tight. We'll now see uh, with the smoker to see how some small leaks uh, will interact with the building envelope with the supply leakage causing that roughly five Pascal negative pressure. So I have one of these pressure taps that are over here on the corner. Uh, we'll use the smoker uh, and just see uh, with the house being at negative five pascals for a tight envelope, um, let's see what that air actually looks like as it's getting pulled in. So what you see here is a pressure tap that's on the side of the wall here where I can you know, access uh, to read room pressure here if I wanted to with a manometer from the outside. But it is a small hole in the building enclosure. Uh, so we can see how the air interacts. If we put a little bit of fog up to the outside, We can see it get driven in by that negative pressure that's being caused by the supply leakage in the ductwork. And this is what happens in our homes. Uh, when we have any kind of leakage that's around any kind of penetrations in the walls or ceiling, uh, around supply boots, return boxes, electrical boxes, uh, anywhere where we might have sheet goods like sheeting or drywall that meet our framing that's not deliberately sealed, air is getting driven inward by any kind of negative pressure that we might have. So that's a really important thing to consider about uh, air leakage in that building envelope. It's not just about knowing how much is there, uh, but it's also important to know how it's distributed so we can find that with a blower door and a smoke tool or a thermal camera, uh, and then knowing how the mechanical systems interact with it. So if we are under a pretty high negative pressure like that, whenever the HVAC system is running, then we're just actively pulling on those leaks, making it harder and harder to gain control over comfort and indoor air quality. So if you guys have any questions about dominant duct leakage or mad air or how our mechanical systems interact with the building envelope, feel free to reach out to us at Retrotech. We're happy to help. Thanks.